Hello and welcome to this bite sized webinar series. My name is Kerry Hammock and I'm a consultant with the Compliance People. Today I'll be talking you through UK packaging waste and producer responsibility. In this webinar, we will be covering what the packaging waste regulations are and how they work, who is obligated by them, what is required by the regulations, and any key definitions. So we'll start with the basics. The Producer Responsibility Obligations Packaging Waste Regulations 2007 as amended impose on producers of packaging materials and those involved in the sale of goods in which such material is used the obligation to recover and recycle their packaging waste. This means that all businesses that produce or use packaging should contribute towards the cost of its recycling and recovery. The aim of the regulations is to reduce the amount of packaging produced, reduce the amount of packaging waste that goes to landfill, increase the amount of packaging waste that is recycled and recovered, and it's actually the first piece of producer responsibility legislation in the UK, and it works on the principle of shared producer responsibility. The regulations place obligations on businesses that use packaging or sell packaged goods to finance the recovery and recycling of a proportionate amount of the packaging materials they have placed on the market. The producer obligation is calculated, and this is in Schedule 2 of the Packaging Waste Regulations. So the UK is able to accomplish the recovery and recycling targets set out in the Packaging Waste Directive, certain targets are set and certain obligations must be met. All businesses that use and handle packaging or packaging materials will be obligated under the regulations if they pass two specific thresholds, which I'll go on to explain later. So what is packaging? The definition of packaging for the purpose of these regulations is Packaging is any material used to hold, protect, handle, deliver and present goods. This includes packaging for raw materials right through to finished goods to be sold or being sold. This is the definition as set out by the Environment Agency who enforce these regulations in England. These include things such as pallets, boxes, bags, tape for wrapping, rolls, tubes and clothes hangers sold as part of the clothing item. So how do the packaging waste regulations work? Well, any business that qualifies under the regulations must meet recycling targets. And these are annual figures relating to the type and weight of packaging used and or produced. And the targets set are defined by government. The set of targets are applied and determines the amount in tonnes that your business has responsibility for. Businesses must commit to recycling an equal volume of the specific material or materials. And they must provide evidence of this recycling in the form of packaging recovery notes or PRNs. You can buy PRNs from accredited recycling companies which reprocess the specific materials your business handles. We will go through PRNs in more detail later in the presentation. But first, we will look at who actually has duties under the regulations. So who is obligated by the regulations? As mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, all businesses that use and or handle packaging or packaging materials will be obligated if they pass two specific thresholds. So you're an obligated packaging producer if you or the group of companies you're part of handled 50 tonnes or more of packaging materials or packaging in the previous calendar year and also have a turnover of more than £2 million a year. You're not handling packaging or packaging materials that you use internally within your business. So what does it mean when the regulations talk about handling packaging? Handling means that you do all of the following things. You carry out one or more of the activities in the activity list and have these activities carried out on your behalf or do them yourself. We'll talk more about the activity list in the next slide. You own the packaging on which the activities are carried out. You supply packaging and or packaging materials at any stage in the chain or to the final user of the packaging. And again, you're not handling packaging or packaging materials that you use internally within your business. 
The activity list is listed in Schedule 1, Table 1 of the regulations and includes all of the different activities related to packaging that would make you obligated under the regulations. So there's raw material manufacture, which is producing raw materials for packaging manufacture. Packaging conversion, so you convert raw materials into packaging. Packing and or filling, where you put goods into packaging or put packaging around goods. Selling, where you supply packaged goods to the end user. Importing, where you import packaged goods and or packaging materials from outside of the UK. And this includes raw materials that will become packaging. For example, plastic pallets used to make bottles. And then finally, service provider. A business that supplies packaging by hiring it out or lending it. So you're obligated if you meet the two thresholds of handling 50 tonnes or more of packaging in the previous calendar year and have a turnover of more than £2 million a year and you carry out one or more of the listed activities here. If you're a packaging producer and you're obligated, it may be possible that you can gain small packaging producer status. You're classed as a small producer if you have a turnover between £2 million and £5 million or of less than £2 million, but you're part of a group or company group that has an obligation. You can register a group as a small producer if the group of companies has a combined turnover that's under £5 million. If you're a small packaging producer, what this means is that you're eligible to use simpler calculations when working out your obligation. You can use a government set tonnage, which is currently 30, and multiply this by the turnover of your company in millions of pounds to calculate your obligation. This is known as the allocation method. Or, alternatively, you can calculate your obligation based on the packaging handled in the previous calendar year. It also costs less to register as a small packaging producer with the regulator or a compliance scheme. You must also provide proof of turnover or audited accounts to the regulator or the compliance scheme when registering if you choose the allocation method. So what do you need to do when your business is part of a group? Well, you need to add up the total amount of packaging handled and the annual turnovers across the group to see if you're obligated. If you're a holding company and have two or more subsidiaries that handle packaging, or both you and the holding company and at least one subsidiary handle packaging, then you're classed as a group. A holding company that does not handle packaging itself with only one subsidiary that does is not a part of a group. We'll now move on to talk about what you need to do if you're obligated. So every year, an obligated packaging producer must register as a packaging producer by the 7th of April, meet their recovery and recycling obligation, obtain evidence of compliance of meeting this obligation, and submit a certificate of compliance, known as a COC, by the 31st of January the following calendar year. So how do you register? Well, you need to register or be registered with the relevant regulator by the 7th of April each year. In England, this is the Environment Agency. In Wales, it's Natural Resources Wales. Scotland, it's the Scottish Environment Protection Agency. And in Northern Ireland, it's the Northern Ireland Environment Agency. And there's two ways in which you can register. So you can register yourself using the National Packaging Waste Database, or you can join what's known as an approved compliance scheme. If you choose to register yourself, then you'll need to register with the environmental regulator where your registered head office is or your main place of business is based. To submit a registration, you must be an approved person. And this is a director or company secretary, a company partner or a sole trader. And you can delegate this function to another person if you choose to, but they'll need to complete a form and you'll need to sign that. And this is available from your regulator. To get access to the National Packaging Waste Database, which is what you'll need in order to comply with the regulations and be registered, you'll need to complete an authorised signatory form and pay the relevant fee. Once you've done this, you'll get access 
and you'll be able to enter your contact details and business information and any packaging data that's relevant. In the packaging data, you must describe your main packaging activity, for example, if you sell packaged goods, any secondary packaging activities, so for example, importing packaging, and also how you worked out how much packaging you handled in the previous year. So where did this information come from and what were the calculations? You do not need to include any packaging that's been used before unless it's been imported or any packaging that's processed waste. The National Packaging Waste Database auto generates your obligation based on the data you provide. So if you do not fill the tables out correctly, then you'll have the wrong recovery and recycling target. So you need to make sure that you submit the data very carefully and follow the instructions in the system. If you don't want to register yourself, it is possible to join what's known as a compliance scheme. And many businesses and companies find that this is much easier as the compliance scheme takes on the obligation for them for a fee. So what they need to do if you want to choose this option is select an approved compliance scheme from the public register and pay the relevant fee. And the public register will be accessible from the relevant environmental regulators website so you can search for approved schemes. So the operator of the scheme takes on the legal liability for all of the scheme's members so that's everybody that's part of that compliance scheme. So this will include the registration, data submission and obtaining evidence of compliance with the regulations. You must still supply accurate data to the scheme about your packaging usage so that they can get the correct information into the system. Producers are not defined as registered members unless they've paid their membership and supplied accurate data. And the regulations were amended to include this with the caveat that producers are not defined as registered members unless the appropriate fees have been paid and the data submitted. It's really important that you keep evidence of your registration so that you can prove compliance with the regulations. This is something that auditors often look at, so it's worth bearing in mind. So I mentioned earlier about packaging recovery notes or PRNs, and these are really important as they are evidence of the recycling and or recovery of packaging to meet the obligation in the re regulations. They're also known as EPRNs, and this is just electronic packaging recovery notes. And that's because the National Packaging Waste Database is electronic. You must obtain evidence of waste packaging recycling and recovery that's equivalent to your obligation. So that's the weight of your obligation. The material recycler and or reprocessor can be accredited by the regulator. And so you must get PRNs from accredited recyclers or reprocessors and they'll sell them to packaging producers and or compliance schemes. And the PRNs are essentially the proof that this tonnage of recycling and or recovery has been performed. You can't use the National Packaging Waste Database to carry out financial transactions for evidence notes, but it does record and track any packaging recovery notes or packaging export recovery notes credited to your account and shows the balance of your obligation for which you still need to provide evidence. PERNs are packaging export recovery notes, and these are relevant if you're exporting any packaging material. On the right of the slide here, you can see an example of what an EPRN looks like. The cost of them aren't fixed. They can rise or fall depending on the perceived demand and supply of materials. And a recycler can only sell PRNs or EPRNs for the amount of material that it recycles. To be compliant with the packaging waste regulations, you'll need to have a Certificate of Compliance or COC. And this must be submitted to the appropriate regulator by the 31st of January, immediately following the end of the calendar compliance year. The National Packaging Waste Database will generate the certificate for directly registered producers, and it will say whether or not the obligation has been met. But the authorised person must check that this, this is correct and then log into the system to sign it off and submit it. So the authorised person must check, sign and submit. If you're part of a compliance scheme, then they will provide the certificate of compliance for you and submit this on your behalf. But it's really important that you get a copy of this and keep it safe for auditing purposes. 
Under the regulations, certain packaging producers have consumer information obligations. If your main activity is selling packaged goods, then you must give customers information about the following. So this is information about the return, collection and recovery systems they can use, their role in reusing, recovering and recycling any packaging and packaging waste, what the recovery and recycling symbols on the packaging actually mean, and how they can get copies of waste strategy guidance. You must upload this information to the National Packaging Waste Database or provide it to your compliance scheme if you're registered with one, with an explanation as to how you will achieve the requirements and get the relevant information out to consumers and customers. Finally then, in summary, you'll need to check if you're obligated. So has your company handled 50 tonnes or more of packaging materials or packaging in the previous calendar year? And does it have a turnover of more than £2 million a year? You'll need to register with a relevant regulator if you are, are obligated, either directly or by joining a compliance scheme. You'll then need to submit annual data to the regulator on the amount of packaging the business has handled. You'll need to procure PRNs as evidence that the obligation has been met. And you may need to provide information to consumers about the product's packaging, for example, where it can be recycled, the meaning of labels, etc. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at the compliance people. And if you've enjoyed this webinar and you'd like a bit more information about other topics, then we've got lots more resources available at our website, thecompliancepeople.co.uk. Thank you.